So, all in all, that pretty much just wraps up everything in the best cohesive package that I can really deliver to you all. If you really want a little bit more in-depth detail of certain topics, you know, go ahead and comment about it below and you know my wife she'll let me know about it and if I and you know if I have the time and if I really feel like want to disclose such information I'll go ahead and try to put something together and do that for you all but there is there is one common question <laughs> that my wife keeps getting for years on end and it's why did we decide to homeschool all right and yes, so you, everybody knows, yes, I participate in the education of my children. It ain't one of those things where my wife, she does it all. No, I teach these kids math. I'm not saying I'm a mathematician, but I'm really good at it. I can do some science, and I got some history under my belt. Those are my three subjects. But when it comes to reading, comprehension, and language, I'm not a you know, I've done a lot of reading these past several years and whatnot, and I've got a lot of knowledge up here now because I've been doing it. I'm happy for it. Um, but that's just not my strong point. It's really not my strong point. I'll admit that. <laughs> but you give me some math, I'm pretty much okay with it. But here we go. Why do we decide to homeschool? I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and state that it's an obvious answer because honestly it isn't. It's homeschooling is one of those types of choices where there's pros and cons. There's pros and cons of everything. Because for people who are able to put their children in school, the pro to that is that their children are being exposed to a whole lot of things. And it gives the parent the free reign to focus on other things that they, they can focus on, like their careers and whatnot. So I'm not sitting here saying, I'm not knocking folks who actually want to pursue that path. That's technically that general path that everybody chooses. Okay, that's what we're, that's what we're educated to do anyway. But the reason why I wanted to homeschool my children, it's not only because I was homeschooled myself, but see, I know the difference. Because I was in public school. I was in public school up until middle school. And... After being homeschooled throughout my high school life, there is a drastic difference between the two. I'm telling you, there is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to list the reasons out to you all as best to my knowledge, based on experience. Being homeschooled, you teach your child precisely what you want them to know. See. In today's education system, I have to fully disagree with how things are going right now because the Common Core curriculums, eh, they sound crazy to me. I'm gonna be frank, they sound crazy. Some of the stuff that I'm hearing that kids are learning these days either are way beyond their le the level of their age or it, it's something where it's so complicated, even the parents are being, are being flustered by what they're looking at. Like, what is this? Even I don't know what this is. Like. Like, okay, the Common Core curriculums for math are, com they, they don't make any sense. I thought math was like this. As long as you get the answer, hey, you're good. We'll teach you the simplest way how to get the answer, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how you get the answer as long as it's correct, right? Right. So why is math so complicated versus what we're used to doing from years ago, back, at, back in the 90s? It makes no sense to me. All right. Now, I'm not saying this part to offend anyone, but the I'm having a hard time understanding why our children are being educated about sexual orientation at an early age. <laughs> mm. I, I'm not sitting here knocking those people, okay? But a child does not need to understand sexual orientation at that type of age. No, they don't. If they don't need to know. If you think your kid's not learning it, check again. Okay, if they don't need to understand the difference between gays, lesbians, transsexuals, pansexuals, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. They don't need to know all that. They're too young. That's way too, that's way beyond what they can understand at their age. Okay, but, they, but the, 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 they're, they're, 
teaching these kids this stuff younger and younger and younger and it's like okay now it's getting too, too dangerous even for me right school should not step in that arena that's something for your parents to talk about no schools no you need to stay out of that but again you as the parent homeschooling your child you have strict control of what they learn now i'm going to go ahead and quote this now even though I don't claim to be religious and Christian that much anymore. There are still some principles that I still take from that I still feel is very good to walk around with. I remember reading that Bible and it clearly stated, and I quote, teach your child the way he or she should go to where they shall not depart from me. Who is the one that had a responsibility for teaching a child? You. God never said, the teacher was responsible for them. God never said the education system is not responsible or anybody else for that matter. He said, you shall teach your child in the way he, he or she should go, that, she should, that they will not depart from me. That's your responsibility. So anything your child learns that you did not want them to learn, that's you. That's on you. But people right now are casting their responsibilities on other people. So when their child comes home acting weird or like, I didn't teach you to be like this. No, you let them learn that. See, again, even though children have a wide variety of things they can learn, there's a wide variety of things they don't need to learn either. Right, that's a little too much. No, because kids right now are getting younger and younger. And remember, the internet for some reason, all these kids got access to these smart devices. They're having all this access to stuff they do not need to have access to. And guess what? If our, your children are hanging around those other types of children, they're going to poison their minds in something you never want them, not want them to know. At least not yet. And because they're too young, you can't protect them from that. All right, you, you're, you are sending your little five, six-year-old child out into a world that will eat your child alive if, the, if they're if left unchecked. And we see it every day. Turn on the news. Mm -hmm. we, uh, turn, you can even go to social media for this. We keep seeing so many things about people saying what's happening to our child in the education system. And it's getting vicious. Yeah, even stuff they don't put on the news, because a lot of it they don't. No. We just hear it from, you know, word of mouth. Right. That's how you find, that's how, well, that, well, for the most part, that's how we found out our information. We just go up on social media through Twitter, Instagram, wherever, and this is where we get the information from. I'm like, man, we're so glad we didn't, we didn't put our children in school. Oh, yeah, and look what's happening now, the pandemic. We were lucky. We were lucky. We didn't have to do anything. Our kids were already here. Not much changed for us. No. Now, I will, but I will, I will say that it is based on what state you're in. Because some states, they're more lenient for people homeschooling versus some, um, they are extremely strict on it. Definitely. You need to have an attendance schedule. You need to let them know what curriculum they're learning. All that stuff. See here, where we're at, we ain't got to worry about all that stuff. Right. <laughs> Georgia's super lenient. As I tell everybody, I tell everybody that same thing. Georgia's very lax as far as homeschooling. Right. As long as you report in what what, what you're doing from time to time, eh. Yeah, ain't gonna say nothing about it. Okay. Um so but and see here's the other thing. See, though you have full control of your what your child is learning and whatnot, see now you're able to 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 now you're able to have the opportunity to show your child different types of things whereas the education system doesn't have. Because based on what we know, based on our neighborhoods and whatnot, I suppose. Our schools are not able to provide a high level of education that we wish for our children to have or just be, be exposed to certain things. Because see, like when I was in school and whatnot, I was not exposed to certain fields being in school. I didn't know about too much. And this is the biggest one for me. This is from experience now. Kids, when they're not raised in well-established homes, they will cause disruptions mm -hmm. in class. Whereas good kids who want to learn, who want to succeed, they will be blocked. If that child does not have an extreme will of steel, those kids will wind up corrupting your child given time. And we all hear about it. 
especially in, in high school. You got that valedictorian, valedictorian, or you got that one child who's a superstar, that one that one young person in high school, and then somehow they just wind up running them up one day. And it's like, what happened? They were pop, they, they were at the top of the heat of their game. What in the world happened? They got influenced by the wrong individual. Right. So another reason we didn't do it: peer pressure. I deal with a lot of peer pressure, and I'm glad. Now, I, now, see me. I got a real steel. I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I don't give a care what you tell me. I'm gonna be myself. I don't care what you guys want to laugh me on. I will be myself to the bitter end. But guess what that caused me to be? In the corner somewhere by myself all the time because I didn't want to be with the crowd because I wasn't cool like everybody else. I wasn't wearing the name brand clothes. I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't hanging out with a certain type of cool people at the time. Could care less about those people. Being a bully, a huge thing I deal with. Same here. Being bullied, being called a geek, four eyes, being kicked around all the time. Hated it. And see, here's the other thing about it. And again, more from experience. Because of this skin color right here, you're definitely marked. All right. You, you, I mean, you get mocked because you're stupid. You get mocked because because you're smart. Which one is? But in my personal experience, I'm just like anybody else. It's like, hey, I like learning. I, I want to be successful just like everybody else. But when you got those other groups of kids who look at you and they're like, oh, you think you're too good for us? So you wind up being looked down on because of that? And then you got the other group, the other group, whereas, uh-uh, don't think you in our league. You all know what I'm talking about. And that's what I dealt when I was in school. I was looked upon as too good to hang around one group and not good enough to hang around another one. So I, so I had no friends, basically. I basically had no friends. That same nonsense happened when I was in college. Same thing happened when I was in college. I didn't have no friends in college. I was mostly focused on my studies, getting stuff done. I, there was nobody that wanted to hang out with me. I was boring them almost everybody. There was nobody interested in me. The only time people got around me is because they want me to help them with that doggone work. And I'm looking at them like, why are you coming to me? If you get your butt in here and work just like I am, you finish your stuff too. Everybody want to go off and play and goof off all the time. <laughs> all right, but I'm not going to be inclined to want to help you though. <laughs> but hey, I don't want my kids to suffer through that. They're going to focus on their work and they're going to focus how to have their own success. I don't want these kids being being pressured by others to do things they know they should not be doing just because they want to see them get in trouble. Because as, as, as we all know, that's what people do anyway. You got all these young bloods out here who want to run around and they want to purpose get other people in trouble because, hmm, you too good. We got to figure out a way how we're going to get you to kind of be on our level. Mm -hmm. Happens every day. And that because I've been through that how many times of my own, I says, I'm not going to let my kids go do something like that. My kids have a bright future ahead of them, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure they get, I'm gonna make sure they get it. So if I can try to get as much control over what happens to my child as possible, I'm gonna take those that route. So yeah, it may seem like we're making a foolish decision, and even though yeah we we've been going through the ringer, and it's like look, it would be just easy if you guys would just put those kids in school, put them in daycare, and go to work. Even though yeah, it would be easier to do that. Well, actually, no, it wouldn't because it's going to cause so, because we've been on a certain dynamic for how long, trying to make that drastic move of a change would totally just turn this household upside down. It would be too much. We couldn't even afford to do it at this point. No. It's not that easy a transition. <laughs> it's just not. Just like how it's hard for a lot of you people out there to make the transition from going to school to homeschool, from going to homeschool to school, uh-uh, too much for a drastic, drastic transition. Can't do it. That's Won't five, do it. That's five kids. You gotta get signed up. Then you gotta meet individual teachers. Right. Individual classes. Uh uh. That's just uh, too much. That's too much for us. Well, what we got going on right now, it would be way too much for us to handle. And they'll have their own individual set of friends that they want to bring right. home, and I'm not uh, managing all that. That's too much to keep up with for me. Mm mm. <laughs> see, I, 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 but see, here's the other thing too. I want to be a part of my child's life. Think about it for a moment, everybody. Think about it. I'm gonna break it down like this. Husband and wife going to work for 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week. Your child going to school eight hours a day. 
The only time you get to really see your child is maybe at least one hour out of each day. A couple of extra hours on the weekends. What time do you actually have to spend with your child? See, what's, see pay attention to how you, you interact with your child. Because what starts happening over time, you start actually resenting your own child. Your child is in you. You become two totally, you two become strangers in your own home, and that is your blood. That is your kin. And you guys act like strangers in your own home. How does that even happen? Too much outside influence. That's all it is. But being homeschooled, you have full influence over your child. Your child's gonna value everything you say down to the letter versus the child being at school all the time, listening to their friends and buddies and teachers long before they listen to you. That's how you run into these altercations with your own children. Why you can't get them to listen to you. Why they seem to talk back to you in a, in a horrible fashion. Why they don't talk to you at all. They get age trying to hide everything they do. What's wrong? Nothing. Slamming the door in your face because you done done one little thing to just tee them off for some reason. How was school? Good. What else? Oh, nothing. Right. You just get dry answers. You don't know what's going on. Mm -mm. I hate it. Mm -mm. I if you, and if you claim you're in a relationship with your child, then do things, then you gotta spend more time with your child. I remember hearing about this one day, and this is no joke. Some of you might know about this, but I remember seeing this and oh my God, it was amazing. <laughs> there was a father, he was always busy, ripping and running, doing stuff, making money. His child kept wanting his attention. Mm. Sorry, son. I ain't got time for. I ain't got time. And he was, but his his son was always listening to how his dad was talking, and he was saying that um, that you know, his father was saying things like you know, money don't grow on trees. I gotta get out here and I gotta work. My time is money. And but he was saying all this stuff, and then one day, I don't know if he got the money from somebody or he asked his father for some money at one point, and then all of a sudden one day. Oh yeah, I remember. He his son walked up to him. Dad, what is it now, son? He handed his own father a twenty dollar bill. And he looked at his son like, what's this for? He's like, Daddy, can you please just spend one hour since time is mo since money seems so it means so much to you for your time, can you at least spend one hour with me? <laughs> oh man. That man flew down toward his child and gripped him so hard. He said, son, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And he realized at that moment what he almost did to his own child. But you see, this is what America will do to you if you're not paying attention. You are forsaking your own child for something that you, you're naturally going to do because I need money to take care of my family. But your money should never replace your family. But you see, what's going on here? Money is replacing everything. And to me, it's ridiculous. You are forsaking your own children, your own parents, your own family members over over money and I'm sitting here like that that and everybody's wondering why everybody's fighting so much, why everybody's backbiting, stabbing each other and all that. That's why. And it starts what's going on in the home. That's where it all starts. So I'm trying to change that kind of behavior in my family by saying no. I don't want a family like that. I don't, I don't even want to take a chance of even going through something like that. Now, I'm not saying that every family goes through this. Because there are some families out, families out there who have that type of dynamic and it works and everyone gets along. I am not sitting here saying that, it's, it, that it doesn't happen. But the chances of having the bitter end is way too high. Especially nowadays or in recent years. Right, because another reason we didn't homeschool is because I don't want anybody abusing them. Bingo! You know, There's that another one. Would be a huge one. Bing 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 right in my own home. <laughs> um, and I'm going to send my children off to strangers where teachers are molesting kids every day. I keep hearing no. all the articles out there. Do your research, everyone. I promise you, if you go on the internet and you start doing your research about what's going on with these poor children in these institutions, You'll find some stuff in your life. People 
but Carolyn said daycare and not watching his kids. Right. All kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not with it. The information's there. He's got to look for it. Kids are committing suicide now. They're seven to eight year olds committing suicide because okay. they go to school and they get taunted by their buddies who have phones, mind you, and they're young. Seven to eight year olds got a freaking iPhone and they're recording the child, putting them online and embarrassing them so they get bullied and they go home and commit suicide. I've heard a couple stories like that and that's just ridiculous. How does an eight year old know how to kill themselves? Right. See, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, what we're getting at is how does a child have the stress level of an adult? Mm -hmm. How does that happen? A little child, the only thing that child is supposed to be able to do is play and learn. That's it. But how does a child get so stressed out to a, to a level to where they're at adult level stress? That doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Nope. They even got headaches now. Kids have headaches now. What the hell? I never had a headache as a kid. Never. Unless I watch TV too long. But yeah. It's just it's ridiculous. So, I mean, we can go on and on about this topic here. Right. This, this, this <laughs> is one of the topics that we can go forever with. Right. I mean, we are heavily convinced that having our children at home learning what we want them to learn is it's a whole lot more of a safer controlled environment than taking your child somewhere and you have no idea what they're learning no clue until one day you just want to fumble through your child's stuff or you just come across something your child has said or done and you're like where'd you learn that uh at school what see now you want to go down to the school you want to rat and rave about it but it's like well you're the one that gave them to, to that system you can't see. Here's the other funny thing. You can't just go down to the school and demand that they take the curriculum away. It's just you. You have to have a, you have to have enough parents that really come down there and really bring a big case to that. But with everyone's work schedules being all over the place, what time are you gonna have to really make such a case? You are at the mercy of the education system when you do something like that. You're at the, you're at their mercy. So if you send your child to school and whatnot, you are at their mercy. Uh, I don't want to be at the mercy of anybody, thank you. As a parent, it is my duty and my responsibility to make sure my child is educated the way I want them to be. Well, I'm taking that very seriously. I don't trust the girl. I'm just as serious about that as my first kiss. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. So, I mean, that's how, that's how high we value our children. We put them way up here. I want my children to be more, be more, 10 times more successful than I ever was. And I'm learning all, I'm getting all the information, I'm learning everything, I'm breaking everything down for my children. I'm teaching them about money, I'm teaching about what investing is, I'm teaching our children uh, what steps they can make to avoid heavy roadblocks that I done ran into, that I never knew were there, because, you know, you get better as you learn. You can't do better unless you know better, right? Well, guess what? I'm learning all these lessons. I'm going to take all that stuff, and I'm about to give it to my kids. By the time they're 25 years old, they should be well beyond where I was. Yep, that would be a great accomplishment.